Nazareth. It weren't much of a place to look at up there on that hill. Maybe 200 hillbillies living there in a trailer park. <laughs> no fort. No walls. No need, really, if you think about it. I mean, who'd want it? Not exactly the kind of place a king would want to build him a palace. But Nazareth was a great place for a Jewish boy growing up. On the south edge of town is a sharp cliff overlooking the Jezreel Valley. With its sharp drop-off, it provides a magnificent view, as long as you didn't play soccer too close to the edge. Of course, as a boy, Jesus was always careful about his soccer ball, not like his little brother James. About twice a week, James would give that ball a kick, and he'd start rolling toward that cliff. He'd run after it, watching her go like in slow motion as he tried to talk that ball from rolling over the edge. He'd get there just in time to watch it bounce on down for eternity. Now, in truth, there's a certain majestic beauty in them long, slow bounces as they trail off in the distance. But then all his friends would leave because... They knowed that James would have to traipse on down half a mile to fetch her, and then half a mile back up, and he'd likely be late for dinner by then. And then would come that sarcasm from his mama that hurt so much. Why can't you be more like Jesus? Jesus don't never kick his ball down that cliff. But sometimes that made James say rock eye to his brother in his heart it did. But he never said it out loud, so he is hoping it didn't count again him. Anyways, that cliff edge was a favorite place in town, long as you didn't have nothing that was shaped like a sphere in your hands. Young Jesus Sabbath school teacher would often take the boys there to teach them Bible stories. From that very spatial spot, they could see pretty much the entire history of the saints of old unfold before them. Off to the left is the Jordan River, and to the right's the Mediterranean Sea. You can pert near see your both bodies of water from here. The whole land is so compact and rich with the history of the saints and sinners of the ages. Now, just off to the left, blocking the view of the river, Mount Tabor rises out of the plain like a big, well, uh, mound in the middle of a plain, I guess you'd say. That's where Deborah rallied the troops of Israel, and she had great glory. And straight ahead in the valleys, the battlefield where Saul and his boy Johnny was both killed. On the other side of it is Mount Gilboa, where God used Gideon to deliver Israel with only 300 brave men. Nearby is where evil Jezebel went splat on the ground and got eaten by dogs. <laughs> now the boys had always asked for that story, you can be sure. And way over to the right, where Elijah had a showdown with old Jezebel's false prophets on Mount Carmel. Well, they say stories like that make a boy grow bold. Stories like that make a man walk straight. Yes, sir. Where was it? Oh, right, this cliff, Jesus coming out party. <laughs> See, when a man turns 30, they have him preach his first sermon to the hometown crowd. With the potluck to follow Everybody's there, smiling and proud of their homie as if they'd made it themselves. You know how it is. It's the same southern Jewish synagogue he'd grown up in since he was three years old, and they saying, Can you believe he's 30? He's so handsome and well-mannered, if a bit peculiar. Never done nobody no wrong. Well, every eye's on him. And he reads from the book of Isaiah. Says it's being fulfilled this very day. Hoo doggy. Every Nazarene's thinking the same thing. They're going to be famous at last. Well, then Jesus' talk takes a turn they don't like. He quotes two stories from the Bible of how God chose to bless Gentiles. The widow in Elijah's time. Naaman the leper. Now, what is up here? Was Jesus saying that gods are going to choose Gentiles? I tell you, nothing will get a good Jew's loincloths up in a wad quicker than talking about God-loving people that ain't his chosen ones. 
The after-synagogue crowds experiencing some serious low blood sugar and talking about Gentiles ain't helping things none. Sudden like the whole town gets angry and a pit bull looking at a postman. They all's deciding he's not our little boy turned prophet, but a terrible heretic worthy of death. Every one of them men, they grab Jesus and rush off to, you guessed it, the cliff. They surround Jesus, his back at the edge of the cliff. He gazes at his mentors, his teachers, his family, his friends. They's all looking at him and then passed him to that great valley of history. High noon in Nazareth. Zoom your brain in on Jesus' eyes as he stands tall and faces his opponents. Cut to one of the elders, shooting him a steely glare. Cut to Mary, eyes darting back and forth. His old teacher flexes his fingers and cracks his knuckles all sinister-like. Somewhere in the distance a morning dove give a coo and it sound like that flute noodle in them old westerns. More silence, more close-ups. Nearby, a cricket lets one fly. Then Jesus, he starts to walk right out through the crowd. Somehow, they can't move to act on murdering this one who quotes stories they done told him themselves, even though they don't understand. Jesus slips through the crowd and leaves. Well, sure enough, Nazareth has been a great place to grow up. But it ain't a great place to die. The prophet's got to move on to Jerusalem for that. That's right ahead, yonder about 60 miles.